Hi, I'm Dr. Kyle Montgomery, and in this video, we'll be looking at a circuit with a sinusoidal source and kind of applying a node voltage technique uh, in order to do analysis to evaluate what these two voltages, V1 and V2, are in the circuit. So the circuit that we're given, uh, as you see, has two different sources uh, given in their phasor form. So I have four at a phase of 90 degrees volts and two at an angle of zero degrees amps for the voltage source and current source respect respectively. So because those are already given in the phasor form, they don't tell us anything about the frequency specifically. So let's say that information is given here separately to say omega is 1,000 radians per second. Um, so now the first step basically, if we wanted to evaluate V1 and V2, well we would certainly want to um, understand what each of the passive elements are in terms of their impedance because just working directly with the um, capacitance and inductance values uh, directly is not going to help us work with the phasor forms and, and be able to do our, analys our analysis in the frequency domain, which as we've uh, discussed will be a lot easier than trying to do everything in the time domain, right? So that, let's uh, do that first initially here. So let me, uh, let's say, indicate this uh, impedance of my capacitor just as ZC and the impedance of my inductor as ZL. And of course, the impedances of resistors are just the same value as the resistance, so we don't really need to worry so much about um, doing that, as it were. So for ZC, this would, of course, would be uh, minus J over omega C. And again, we're given omega as 1,000, capacitance of 2 millifarads. Uh, so here, this would evaluate out to minus J over uh, just 2 there. Uh, as you see, the 2 millifarads times 1,000 kind of balances out just to give us a quantity of 2 here. Uh, again, this would be in units of ohms. Any impedance is given in units of ohms. The impedance uh, for my inductor here, uh, which is given as J omega L. So here I have 4 millihenries times 1,000 radians per second. So this just gives me a value of J times 4, also ohms again. Okay, so now that we have the impedances for our two, uh, for our capacitor and our inductor, we could start thinking about how I could um, use the node voltage approach to evaluate what these two voltages, V1 and V2, are. Well, so what you should kind of immediately recognize is that I have this voltage source sitting between these two node voltages as indicated. So hopefully remember that that tells us we can apply the so-called super node uh, technique in order to um, write our equations. So again, a super node would just indicate that we're going to more or less kind of block out <coughs> or write our equation around this given source here. We can write one equation that expresses the currents coming into or out of V1 and add them to the currents going into or out of V2. And the sum of those together will give us the single equation. And then we'll write a separate equation um, which will relate V1 and V2 through this source. So also note that, again, this 39 ohm resistor here, um, you might know 39 is kind of a, maybe a random number for like an exam type question. But as we'll see, this resistor here is really going to have no impact on the um, uh, solution, as it were, because of the fact that the voltage across that 39 ohm resistor is the same voltage given by the source there specifically. So we won't really need that to include that information uh, separately. Okay, so let's go ahead and now start writing our node voltage equation. Um, so we'll start on this side and kind of then evaluate what we have over here. <clears throat> so we know that the uh, current coming in uh, here would be two, uh, two amps. And let me, let's put these um, sources into uh, the imaginary form notation. So if I have two at an angle of zero degrees, this would just be equal to two. Okay, again, remember um, how we evaluate with respect to the uh, circle, uh, the unit circle, and how that evaluates to what this form looks like in terms of imaginary numbers. So this would just be a real quantity of two. And for my voltage source over here, four at an angle of 90 degrees, well, this, so 90 degrees would indicate that this would uh, be the same or equivalently represented as just uh, 4J or J times four, as it were. Okay, so using this term in our node voltage equation, that would say I have, let's say, minus 2 because this current's coming in. Then the current going out would be evaluated as plus, uh, let's say, V1 over the impedance of my capacitor, which I evaluated as being 
minus j over 2. So I'm just going to plug that in there for now, kind of clean that up here in a minute. All right, then I can add then to this equation. Uh, because of the super node, remember, I can just jump over to the second node, evaluate the current going down through my inductor. So this would be, of course, just the voltage V2 over the impedance of my inductor. The impedance of my inductor was given by J, four, J times 4. And then finally, the current through my 4 ohm resistor over there would just be plus V2 over 4. All that equals out to 0. Just kind of put a dividing line here. A little bit easier there. Okay, so this is our node voltage equation, uh, which again, we've been able to write with all of these terms due to the fact that we have a super node that we're working with. Um, if I kind of simplify things, uh, well, actually, before I do that, maybe then we can write an expression to relate V1 and V2 to each other through this uh, voltage source that we have. And so we'll see that that would tell us that the voltage V1 is going to be equal to whatever the voltage V2 is plus this 4 times J quantity or J times 4 uh, expression right there. Okay, So we have one equation, we have two equations, second equation here. So here we see that we have two equations that I can work with, with two unknowns. That will allow us to evaluate specifically what uh, V1 and V2 are. So that's really all we need to do in order to just kind of set up the problem. And uh, as far as doing the evaluations here, again, you might need to brush up on your skills of how we evaluate the imaginary numbers and numerators and denominators and such, but just combine everything as you would typically expect to. And what you should end up evaluating to is uh, V1 equal to 40 over 1 plus J7 plus J4, it's volts, and V2 just evaluates to 40 over 1 plus J7, also volts here. Okay. Again, you can clearly see here how uh, V2 relates to V1 through just this quantity J4, which was the voltage source that we have here in the circuit. Okay. So that's really all we need to do for evaluating what those two node voltages, V1 and V2, are. Again, always just keep in mind that the first thing you want to do is if you're not given the impedances of, your, of any capacitor or inductor, you should really do that for, right off the bat. Um, using the whatever frequency is given to you in the problem. And then from there, uh, it's just basically applying all the standard techniques that we've uh, worked with on for resistor-based circuits and DC circuits. Uh, we can still apply all those techniques, such as the node voltage approach, uh, but now we're working in the frequency domain rather than, than the time domain, okay? So that wraps up for this video. Hope to see you on the next one.